from now there will be a live broadcast every saturday at this time whatever the time is wherever you are where i am it is now 1700 that's five o'clock in the afternoon and i shall do it uh, at this time um every saturday as from now i'm still in the same place and i've had some difficulties getting my engine started and uh anyway it the engine's working that's the uh that's the positive news uh but on the negative side it's not charging um it will charge when i charge it from a um from the mains uh using the uh, the booster the charger but it won't charge from the oh i've forgotten the word in english now what do you call it when it's <laughs> Well, that's annoying. I remember the I can remember the word in French even. I can't remember the word in English. Anyway, whatever it is, the thing that charge accumulato, um, the uh, whatever. Anyway, uh, so it's not charging from the engine motor. So it's from the engine. Uh, so um, anyway, so uh, that is the uh, problem there. Um, I don't quite know what the the answer is yet. I, I hope it isn't the battery. Uh, but then again, it might be. The battery is now five and a half years old. I bought it in September 2015. It's a UASO. The previous uh, UASO battery, which gave up the ghost in 2015, had been in this vehicle since, uh, well, it was date, I don't know, been in the vehicle since then, but it had a, a manufacture date of 1997 on it. And so the battery needs to be on the more 18 years. And to make it even more odd, uh, the previous people, it, this had been a habitation battery. I didn't realise that until I actually got around to changing it, that it wasn't a proper uh, engine battery. I did notice, however, that the engine battery was where the habitation battery when I bought it. And I said that immediately, that's not a proper battery for this type of vehicle anyway. So uh, that's my uh, current uh, problem, uh, which I, I, I think I will be making a move, though, before long. And uh, there is a slight problem, the place I'm going to now, uh, they've got COVID. So um, uh, I'll have to wait for them to get over that one before I actually turn up there. So uh, today, uh, what I wanted to, to say something about is I get messages all the time from people complaining at the uh, amount of time they've got to wait for a new vehicle. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, I talked talk about the uh, um, gentleman from Germany, from Munich, I think, uh, who has a... Uh, been told that he can get a um, whatever he's buying on a uh, Peugeot if he takes it now if he wants it on a Fiat Ducato he's going to have to wait until uh, the next uh, century or something like that and um, that is, that's that's part of the problem what can you do if you want a vehicle quickly well there's something you can do isn't there you can buy a second hand uh, used vehicle which in my opinion is what you should be doing anyway uh, because uh, the initial outlay is so great. Now, in the United Kingdom, if you buy a car, that car is worth, uh, at least it was, um, one third less uh, the moment you drive it outside of the um, room. So it's, um, uh, with motorhomes, it's not quite the same. I would say it's about 10%. Now, if you take another country like Belgium or Germany or something, you can more or less say that the vehicle will lose uh, 10% uh, per year. So for argument's sake, if your vehicle, you've paid 10,000 euros for it, and if you can find a, a new vehicle at 10,000 euros, do let me know. Um, but after one year, it's worth, na or once you drive it out, it's worth nine, and uh, then then it'll lose 10% uh, uh, per year from that. So then the next end of the, the year, it's worth 9,100 for argument's sake. Right, so uh, with a motorhome, it doesn't quite work that way, uh, but you can expect it to lose um, somewhere in the region, you know, getting, maybe getting on for 10% per year. But the cost of the vehicle is very much uh, determined by the equipment that's in it. So a car will cost, the imaginary car I just mentioned, that will cost 10000 uh, and you might find it in 9,950, 9,900 or something like that, or maybe in 9,000. But you won't find uh, these uh, huge, um, sorry, with cars, you won't find the huge differences you find with motorhomes. The problem with motorhomes is this, people always ask, how much does it cost? Every single video I've done, uh, even when I say quite clearly how much it costs, people uh, will ask, how much does it cost? 
thing is it depends on the equipment that you put in it and so um the the uh, equipment um uh is what makes makes the price so um somebody said to me um a couple of days ago so well i've been offered this vehicle and it's 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 used it was a roller team and they wanted i think it's the price was off the top of my head i can't quite remember forty two thousand pounds or something so i'm not forty two thousand pounds and you you and i said yeah but look it's got this that and the other and um they, they sort of didn't consider that as to be part of the price yeah i'm sure you could buy the this very same brand model straight out of the factory uh, less than forty two thousand pounds i think it was forty two thousand pounds i just yes it was it was but uh, i was at 45 whatever um it, but um but not with all this extra kit that you're getting on top of it now if you're competing on price what you have to do is you give absolutely the bare bones of the product so you strip uh, everything out other than say the four the four walls and the four wheels and that's what you're getting but what you um uh, get what you get um with uh, a motorhome that's that's already been used you've probably already got the extra stuff that people like the lithium batteries and the solar panels and uh, all the other stuff you're going to have to buy or you possibly will be wanting to buy anyway so uh these are things i think that people ought to be taking into account now uh next thing uh price increases because obviously supply and demand uh with any market is what um what determines price and if you uh, in the united kingdom if you go to people's people's houses, maybe not so much now but you go to people's houses and they bore you with how much their house is worth and maybe now you can bore people with how much your uh motorhome is worth because there is a clear indication of price increases on the uh, used market it's very difficult to get a, a, an approximation but to my, in my opinion you're looking comparing like to like at approximately 15 to 20 percent over what it was this time last year that's to say the march the 6th 2020 um so um yeah uh, so so that is a uh um I think to consider now there will be a collapse in the value of motorhomes and this in in around three years time uh, of that um I'll use motorhomes that is um I I'm convinced of that because that is a natural cyclical event uh, which you expect from an economy anyway and in this case you've got a sudden boom like you've got now um and then that will end up in bust now one thing you don't get with motorhomes is you would get in re real estate for example i worked in the real estate sector i pulled out in 2007 in in march 2007 so it's 14 years ago this 14 years ago this week it is and um the the reasons i gave is because of the speculation i didn't realize the market was going to completely collapse uh, i thought it would just go through a uh um, a negative phase where, where, where there was no way I could actually uh, get um, money for my investors. I mean, uh, all, all the returns would have been uh, weak. Uh, I wouldn't have expected the investors to have completely lost the money, as would have been the case had I continued. Uh, then, with motorhomes, you don't get speculation. I don't think people are buying up motorhomes on, on spec and then hoping. Uh, there are the big places, such as the one in Sulzemos or other places, there are dealers who will buy things on spec, yes. But um, they, they will order it now for delivery. They'll order a few for delivery in December or something like that. Oh, if they're lucky. And um, then... Um, on the hope that they, they they will sell them but it's not speculation that they you know they're buying this the entire stock of everything so uh as, as you would get with real estate you know people would buy you know banks or, or, or funds which would uh you know, buy the entire tower housing units on on, on spec even as, as soon as you had the, had the uh, per building permit anyway so on the subject of the uh of covid it is now um one year since i came to poland from germany in fact it was the 7th of march and today's the 6th it was the saturday i drove i spent the night in a place called bautzen which is a really a uh, lovely place on uh, in uh, eastern germany 
and uh, about 100 kilometers uh, from the uh, from the Polish border, lying even a bit less than that. And then um, uh, from that, um, next day it was raining, unfortunately, and got there. It was a lovely night, a lovely place to stay with a view of the city. And uh, next day it was it was really horrible, so I sort of just travelled in and I went. I went to um, a campsite uh, in uh, Wrocław in Poland, so I travelled about 200 kilometres that day. And there uh, I ended up spending staying in that campsite, Camp For You, near Wrocław. I stayed there until around the 20th of April. It was uh, because I didn't want to move. Uh, initially, the, the problem was, I thought, oh, I'll just stay a couple of days. And then, uh, and then uh, after that, I had no choice. I had to stay there. I had I I couldn't move anywhere. Um, uh, so uh, anyway, there's some one or two things uh, I I wanted to mention. I really wanted to mention the thing about the, uh, the the motorhome cost. There's absolutely nothing that I can do to help anybody who wants to buy a motorhome uh, in the current situation. I'll get it one quicker uh, in the current situation. So. Um, that's clear. Sometimes you might be able to find something. There's there's one one particular case. If somebody's let's supposing that somebody's ordered uh, a motorhome and then for whatever reason they couldn't actually collect it. Now this was a this time last year that that was more likely because there were, were companies which were hit because of the COVID restrictions and the, uh, the close down and that that caused losses for them and therefore they couldn't actually buy. For example, if somebody had a business which was very much affected by the uh, the shutdown such as a restaurant or or, or anything which feeds into that type of thing then then i doubt they would have bought a motorhome a friend of mine has just acquired a motorhome uh and it was a, a similar situation that uh, that somebody was unable to buy something but um i think those those things are over now i think that uh, with 12 12 months into this disease it's epidemic uh, pandemic then uh, we are we there won't be people who are actually pulling out uh, any longer of their motorhome, or very few people pulling out of their purchases. Okay, right. So uh, I thought if there'd be any question on van life, as I suggested, uh, but nothing's come through as it came through last week. Um, um, but uh, if um, you've got any questions that you want answered live, then. Remember to come on on a Saturday at this time, or just before this time, 10 minutes earlier than this time, and then you can ask your questions, and then I'll try to answer them. Oh, there's Preto from South Poland, who is uh, in... Oh, I've forgotten the name of the place now. Um, I'm, it'll come back to me. Uh, Tarnov. No, no, that's where I'm supposed to be. Sorry, not Tarnov. Um can't remember. I also would like to say hello to the gentleman in Brazil. Yeah, in the mountains. Where in the mountains? That's the question. Which place in the mountains? Tarnów isn't in the mountains. And the mountains in Poland aren't particularly high anyway. Um, Zakopane or somewhere like that. Um, but I would have to say that the mountains in southeastern Poland actually seem to me the most interesting because not not only about a thousand meters high. Ah yes, Viswa. And but they are really wild. Uh, so that 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 I really found that uh, very attractive because the, the place not that everybody goes, Sacco Pane. There's more people there than there's walking down the uh, shopping street uh, in Warsaw, for example, on a Saturday afternoon. So it's not quite uh, it's not quite the same thing. I like a bit of a wilderness when I. Uh, go anywhere so here i ustron is a place uh where where preto comes from and i've got videos from ustron when i was there in 20 in the summer of 2016. so thank you very much for, for listening and all the best here from ozorkov in central poland bye for me now how do i turn this off anybody know ah oh, yes it's up here are you sure you want to stop streaming yes